Start with what you can see. The first thing that you are going to work with as far as your decluttering campaign goes is the visible stuff. We're talking about tangible things. You're going to clear out physical stuff that gives you mental, psychological, emotional, and spiritual clutter. This sounds great, but the problem is you can't just jump in with both feet. You can't just get all pumped up about taking care of possessions that have somehow, some way along the line possessed you instead. You have to have a game plan. If you are really just emotional about this from the get-go, Chances are you will start missing the things you have put away. Sooner or later, you will get back to where you began. You have to have some sort of game plan coming in. Again, as the old saying goes, if you fail to plan, you're actually planning to fail. This is absolutely true when it comes to decluttering. What you need to do is to first begin with what you're trying to achieve. In other words, focus on the question, why? I know at this point you're probably thinking, isn't it obvious? All these things are dragging me down. They're holding me back from the life that I know I deserve. All this mental clutter is just sapping my energy. It's obvious that this physical stuff, my possessions, which I work so hard to accumulate, actually has a toxic effect on me. Isn't it obvious? Well, you might be surprised as to how inefficient you could be when decluttering stuff because at some point, you will come across some things that you're going to compromise with yourself over. You know that it's very toxic. You know that it prevents you from moving on, but for some reason or other, you can't let it go. It has that much of an emotional hold on you. If you don't have a clear understanding of why you're doing this, you will fall into this trap again and again and again. Begin with a game plan. Focus on why you're doing things in the first place. What is the great objective? What do you stand to gain? What do you stand to lose? Do yourself a big favor and write all of this down. It's one thing to keep all of this in your mind. However, let's face it, we all have sorts of minor crises breaking out in our lives every once in a while. Guess what happens when such a crisis flares up? That's right, you forget about supposedly high-priority items. Don't allow this to happen. Write everything down. Read it every morning as you think of the things that you are going to have to clear out of your life. Pay attention to what's at stake. Remember it. Sure, there are going to be points where it's going to get very uncomfortable to let go of stuff. However, if you have everything down in writing and you constantly read your reasons, you will be fine. You will be able to stick to the plan. I have some bad news for you. Even the best laid plans, the ones that make all the sense in the world, fall apart if we're not careful. Why? Lack of consistency. At some point in time, you run out of juice. You just run out of steam. You can't do it anymore. You think you're the first person to come up with a decluttering plan? I'm sorry to report, but the vast majority of people who plan to declutter their life flat out failed. It's not because they're dumb. It's not because they don't have the resources. Many have the time. Many were motivated. Many were driven by a tremendous amount of passion. Still, they failed. Why? They did not stick to it. It really boils down to having a plan. I know it might seem basic but you'd be surprised as to how powerful simple solutions can be. By simply writing down your game plan and why you're doing it, you have a tool that would enable you to put in the work day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. It doesn't matter what side of the bed you woke up on. It doesn't matter what you're feeling like. It doesn't matter if things are going wrong in your life. You're going to stick to it again and again and again. That's how you achieve a serious breakthrough. I don't mean to discourage you, but you're up against a tremendous amount of resistance. If you're anything like the typical person, you define yourself based on your possessions. This might not be obvious, but deep down inside, it's true. Deep down inside, you're thinking, well, I live here. I associate with these people. I went to this school. I buy this stuff. Soon enough, those external things end up defining you. They also end up limiting you. They determine what you can do and what you cannot do or at least what you feel you're incapable of doing. You have to have a game plan, and it has to be written. You have to revisit it each and every day for you to make progress. Do that first. Commit to a change in your personal acquisition patterns. Before we go any further, I just want this to be clear. I'm not saying that you should get rid of all your possessions. I'm not saying that you should shave your head, wear a saffron robe, go up to the highest hill far, far away, and live your life in a secluded Buddhist monastery. I'm not saying any of that, nor am I saying that you should never acquire stuff again in your life. Instead, 
The game plan that I want you to come up with involves changing your relationship with stuff. Prior to this point, you've let stuff define you. Sooner or later, your possessions start possessing you. Things that you own, own you. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. It happens all the time. Sooner or later, people live their lives based on what they can consume and what they possess. However, regardless of how much they eat, how much they consume, how much they accumulate, how much they acquire, they're never fulfilled. They are afflicted with a hunger that actually scales up over time. If you need proof of this, think back to when you were 20 years old and living in college dorms. I remember when I was living at the dorm back in the San Francisco Bay Area. I was very happy to eat two bowls of ramen a day. That was my definition of a great meal. If I'm feeling extra luxurious, I would go to central San Francisco and eat at this Vietnamese restaurant that had this amazing fried rice dish for $3. These simple pleasures were born of the fact that I was on a scholarship and I had to live on $20,000 a year. That $20,000 a year paid for my schooling and my room and board. This means that I really did not have much money left over. However, that was my life, and I was extremely happy. I had friends. We would always go out. We would do stuff that's free or nearly free. I still look back to those days, and they were the best years of my life, and those years did not come with a big price tag. Fast forward to today, and it's a completely different picture. The price tag on my life kept going up as I started to make more money. Once I graduated, my expectations changed. I had to get a nice apartment in a nice part of town. That's the only way I can remind myself that I am moving up the economic ladder, that I was making something out of myself. When I got promoted at a corporate job, my expectations went up again. When I got married, it went up some more. When I finished graduate school, it went up a lot. And then when I had a child, it just reached the stratosphere. It goes on and on and on. I'm sharing this with you because I want you to zero in on a basic truth. If you focus on what you really need, it will quickly dawn on you that you really don't need all that much. Do you really need that BMW in the garage? Do you really need that 5,000 square foot house? You're going to have to focus on what you really need and who you really are. Between these two lies the answer. Again, this is not a one size fits all template that I can cram down anybody's throat regardless of where they come from in the world. Nah, it doesn't work that way. You have to ask these questions to yourself. You have to honestly answer so you can come up with a plan. You have to ask yourself, what do I really need to be me? And who am I really? Once you answer these questions, then you would have a map as to what your proper relationship to possessions should be. What you're doing here is you are trying to figure out what you can commit to because once you commit, you're going to have to do it regardless of what happens next. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what else is going on in your life. You're going to stick to it day after day after day. Focus on what you can commit to. Regardless of the specific answer you come up with, I want you to zero in on the fact that the change that you're going to affect in your life must be all about changing your relationship with your possessions. This means that you're going to have to change your personal acquisition patterns. This does not mean that you're not going to buy anything ever again. Instead, what this means is that you're going to change how you're going to acquire stuff because it might now be centered and or focused on your personal meaning. Are we clear? Now, let's go to decluttering. We're going to be cutting out the stuff that holds you back and drags you down. Do it. By this point, you are committed to changing your personal acquisition patterns. You also have a game plan as to what you're trying to achieve. You're clear on the objective. You understand why you're doing this. Now, let's get down to what you should do. You have committed to doing this. Let's focus on what you should be doing. Start with the 80-20 rule. What if I told you that 20% of the stuff you own accounts for 80% of your results, happiness, and contentment? Sounds crazy, right? Well, look at all your possessions. I would venture to guess that around 80% of those items are things you don't even use on a regular basis, and of those things that you think you use, a lot of them are ornamental in nature. They just make you feel good if you look at them. If you devote any kind of thought to them, they give you some sort of positive feedback, but by and large, they really do nothing. If you were to list down all your possessions, 20% will stand out because these are the things you always use. These are the things that produce positive mental states on a regular basis. 
These impact your personal effectiveness, happiness, and contentment on a sustained, regular, and conscious basis. Get rid of the 80%. I know this is easier said than done, but actually, if you list down the 80% and sort them in descending order of emotional attachment, you actually have a lot of stuff that you can give away, sell, or exchange. Whatever you do, get rid of the 80%. Start at the bottom. Start with the stuff that you really don't care about. This is stuff that is obviously clutter to you. There's no question. This stuff is just hogging precious space. However, as you move up the scale, that's when things get real because it gets closer and closer to your comfort zone. However, you have to stick to the plan. You have to say to yourself, this stuff possesses me. I don't possess it. It's holding me back. It's toxic. Focus on the 20% that truly matters and get rid of the 80%. You don't have to do this overnight. You don't have to put out an ad on Craigslist, hang up a garage sale sign over your door. However, you have to do this. Create a timeline, get rid of the clutter, focus on the 20%. Remember what matters. I wish I could tell you that changing your personal acquisition patterns is a simple one-step process. I wish I could tell you it's some sort of bright line on a calendar somewhere that once you hit that date and you do what you're supposed to do, things are better permanently. It doesn't work that way. It's like trying to lose weight. If you've ever gone on a diet, you know that the first few days or even weeks, you're doing really well. The pounds just melt off. You feel really good about yourself. Every time you look in the mirror, you see this very beautiful or very handsome person. You feel like you're on top of the world. However, sooner or later, that weight comes back. Why? You did not remember your game plan. You didn't focus on what's important. This is not just a simple matter of getting rid of stuff. Anybody can do that. Let's get real here. If this is all just about getting rid of stuff, most people can do this. Instead, you should focus on changing your mindset. You're changing how you think about stuff and what your relationship is to stuff in your life. This is what requires heavy lifting. This is where it can get uncomfortable. But you have to do it. Stick to the plan. From time to time, you will come across some sort of shiny object. You might stumble upon some gadget or trinket that just seems so irresistible. That's when things get real, because when you remember your game plan, you present yourself with a choice. Unfortunately, a lot of people forget the game plan, so they just stumble back into that acquisition pattern. They strengthen their old habits, they feed it, and they end up where they began. Remember your strategy. Be thorough. It's easy to clear out stuff that are obviously status symbols. It's easy to get rid of stuff that are obviously trinkets, gadgets, and things that really don't add much value except for maybe some sort of emotional reward. You have to go past status symbols. Look at items that give you comfort. There's a lot to work with there. You have to understand that if an item gives you comfort, you are just using that item as some sort of mental mirror. Real comfort, assurance, and a sense of worth or meaning can only come from you. You're using that item as a prop. You're bouncing off these mental signals off that tangible item. Your job is to remove the item and go straight to the source. It is you giving yourself that meaning. It is you allowing yourself to feel that way. Cut out the middleman. Focus on within. This is a good segue to what we will focus on in video 5. After you have gotten rid of the 80% of physical clutter, you have to start looking at all your other acquisitions. This can be non-material. I'm talking about attitudes, mental trends, mental clutter, mindsets, assumptions, expectations, misconceptions. Believe it or not, these are harder to get rid of. Why? Like I mentioned, a lot of the physical stuff that we buy are actually just mirrors. Their real value is based on what's going on in our heads. They remind us of ideas that we possess in our minds. Get rid of those ideas, and you would not have to need stuff that mirrors that. That is the real project. As uncomfortable as clearing up a lot of this physical stuff may be, this doesn't compare to the kind of heavy lifting that you would have to do inside your head. That is our big project in video 5. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.